When you think of a concept like the surface of the moon, what comes to mind, or what question might you ask about the moon's surface? Yeah. Why are there craters? Why are there craters? So you're already looking at the moon, seeing, okay, the moon has some sort of physical attributes. It has something in its appearance. And how come there are craters up there? Were well, the craters always up there? What other questions could you ask about craters? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking more of the surface. Would the surface be the same as, like, the dirt on Earth, would it feel the same way? Great question. It is, is it the same type of surface that's on the moon as it's on the Earth? I mean, do we know? Well, we certainly visited there, and we have some indication of what the, what that is like. Um, and so it, it's a way of looking at, at and comparing different different space objects. What other questions might come up? Yeah. What caused the craters? What caused the craters? And if we ask what caused the craters, what might be an answer? What, what might a student come up with? What causes the craters? Things hitting. Things hitting and, and possibly changing the appearance of a surface. Here we have a large crater on the moon. You can notice that there's a rim and an edge up here, and we've got some smaller craters. So craters definitely differ on sizes. So students might ask, why is one crater larger than another? Why does one have such a shape and another? Can you see the shadows in the craters? You bet you can. Yes. You can see the rims and the ridges that are kind of lit up, which suggests, where is the sun? Your point, everybody point, where do you think in this? Yeah, the sun's going to be up here because the light seems to be streaming in and lighting this side of the crater. And you might imagine that this also has an equal size rim, but you don't see it because it's in the shadow. Excellent. This is the surface of Mercury. What looks similar? The craters, we've got, we've got craters here as well. And the shape. And the shape. The shape looks the same. Tell me something about the shape. It's round. It's round, and it also has rim. that rim. It has ridges, a rim, and there's a bowl in here. There even looks to be something in the center of these craters. This is the surface of Mars. You can see the craters, but you can see something really cool in here. There's a theory that fluid... Possibly water flowed over the Mars surface. Can you see what's left behind with deposits of Mars soil here? That if water flowed over, it may have carried it along here. And you can see it actually cutting out. Ridges. Yeah, ridges and, and rims there. I'm sorry, say again? It looks like something splashed. Yeah, it looks like something splashed. These photos are available free of use, so don't forget to access the NASA sites and the ESA, European Space Agency um, site for incredible photos that you can use in your classroom. ESA, European Space Agency. Here's another crater. What planet's that one from? That's a pretty big crater. That is from the planet of Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. What we're looking at here is the huge impact from a meteorite, an asteroid that slammed into the Earth and created this large crater here. Absolutely incredible. So our planet has been bombarded by various types of space debris, larger asteroids, smaller meteorites um, throughout history. Now let's play around with that activity called the surface of the moon. Uh, in the surface of the moon, what we'll be doing is modeling the processes which are responsible for the appearance of the moon. So in this activity, We'll start in this classroom with sand that's already been poured into these aluminum foil trays. You may have students do that in the classroom, but this is a lot less messier so that you've got everything prepped. Now, notice that the tops of the sand, uh, the surface of the sand is pretty smooth. Uh, sometimes what will happen is it may not look that smooth, and it may look pretty, pretty messed up, and just shake it back and forth gets you a smooth surface to work with. Once you have that smooth surface, your next step is going to be spraying the sand lightly with water. So everybody has spray bottles right there? Why don't you lightly spray the surface of the sand with water? Um, just so that the whole surface gets, gets wetted down. You might want to go real fine spray so that you're not creating any surface features because what we're doing is really dampening that top. If you run into problems, just shake the sand back and forth and you'll